Unfortunately, many of the enterprise initiatives around the world have failed to expand or even endure. Today I'd like to offer some advice in key areas which may help our efforts in the future succeed. The primary uh, cause, I think, is from the word go, we have difficulty with people accepting what enterprise and entrepreneurship is in, edu in an educational setting. We know that teachers, many administrators and some parents see entrepreneurship and enterprise in a negative light. They often over-associate it with um, greed, sometimes exploitation, and they feel uncomfortable with the idea that maybe they, their job is churning out uh, tycoons in short pants. But in the, in the, one way I think to deal with this, in the Anglo setting, they make a distinction, a, in definition, a broad distinction, a narrow distinction in this area. A broad distinction is about being enterprising in all things you do. In a narrow area, it's about being enterprising in a commercial setting and usually in the public sector. This um, is not a, um, a, um, a competition between the two. The enterprise, exp the enterprise or the broad definition, right, encompasses the narrow definition of entrepreneurship, not that one's superior. But what, by doing this, it's the enterprising approach, I think, the broad definition is a little bit more palatable. The other important thing is, is that research shows that uh, if you take the broad definition of being enterprising, right, it will tend to achieve the entrepreneurial outcomes that we seek as well. But the opposite is not necessarily the case. If we take the narrow approach of entrepreneurship, it doesn't necessarily mean that we will achieve the broader outcomes of being enterprising in all settings. Interestingly enough, Scotland has made this distinction quite clear, that they talk in an enterprising pedagogy right across all classes, all parts of the curriculum. Entrepreneurship, on the other hand, is, takes place in specific subject areas or, or programs. And they do this, once again, because the enterprising approach they think is more palatable to teachers and parents. And even, um, I don't know whether this um, uh, approach is actually um, achievable in the French context, but I do know that the issue needs to be resolved. I think we need to talk more about enterprising people, enterprising cultures, enterprising workplaces, enterprising uh, administrators. We also need to support, to expand our support to areas like um, social enterprise, student um, task force, student commissions, not just many businesses. The second area where I'd like to offer some advice is where do we place the enterprise program or experience within the crowded curriculum which is already dominated by traditional subjects. There are three areas to consider. Firstly, placing the enterprise activity within a standard subject, English, mathematics and so on, where the teacher requires the students to run a mini enterprise, a um, social enterprise throughout the year or for a particular period of time. This is a fairly easy model and a good point, uh, place to start. The second area is what I call cohabitating. This is simply where a subject is taken like enterprise and added to another subject, it might be mathematics, um, and they share the same timetable. In Western Australia, the uh, approach is called enterprise and technology. In the UK, it's often Enterprise shares the timetable with vocational education or, or business studies. The interdisciplinary approach is certainly worth uh, good consideration. It's a very rich model. Example is, is that in Singapore, Polytechnic requires all students for 10 weeks to run a social enterprise which includes themes from all the areas that they have studied in the last uh, two terms with a big emphasis on communication. Another important thing to do is to really highlight as much as possible the academic outcomes of enterprising activity and experience, particularly in the area of literacy and numeracy. This creates an attraction for um, 
other members of staff and it gives it a degree of solidity, um, uh, credibility within the um, rest of the school. The, um, the other issue I think is equally important is where how many students and what sort of students do we include in enterprise activities. Um, too often what we see is, is that enterprise is presented as an alternative activity to low achieving students who are disengaged from the standard curriculum, um, a hands-on approach. Um, I think that uh, this runs a risk of removing students from the important parts of the rest of the curriculum and also runs a risk of stigmatising enterprise. At the other end, we have the gifted and talented students who also should be included because they need some enterprising experience as well and plus they can add some prestige to the um, uh, enterprise within the school. Um, Leadership's really important also in introducing enterprise into schools. Uh, so I'd advise you strongly to encourage the executives, the principals in your schools and colleges to work directly with students on their projects um, in their, with their teams. They can be mentors, coaches uh, in certain areas like finance, mathematics and so on. The last or the second last area I would suggest that we need to look at is linking the enterprise activities programs closely uh, to national initiatives which have already got a high status and resources behind it, particularly employability and essential skills. And lastly I'd like to say that um, we know one thing and that is that students will not learn to be enterprising with unenterprising role models in unenterprising environments. Thank you.